Has UKIP come of age as a permanent force in British politics? Judging by the level of interest in its spring conference over the past couple of days, the answer seems to be yes. UKIP's leader, Nigel Farage, describes his party as the biggest threat to the political establishment seen in modern times. But it's still a party without a single MP, and under our first-past-the-post system, it may struggle to win seats at the next general election, despite opinion poll ratings in double figures. Mr Farage joins me now. Welcome. That is, in a sense, the problem, isn't it? That you're likely to do well in the wrong election. You'll do well in the European elections, where you've said yourself, you don't really have any influence in the European Parliament. But to pull this country out of the EU, you need to do well in a parliamentary election. Well, everybody said that in 2009, when we surprised people by coming second in the European elections. Mm. They said, all right, that's great, Nigel, but you'll never do it in a domestic election. Well, what happened last May? The English county elections, we got a quarter of the vote, and even under first past the post, managed to get 150 people elected as county councillors. And we've shown in the last half a dozen by-elections in which we've come second, we're making big progress. But under the Treaty of Lisbon, it needs to be the national government, it needs to be MPs who pull Britain out, if that's going to happen. Well, I, absolutely right. Um, it needs to be MPs uh, who pass a resolution in Parliament to give us a referendum. In the end, it's the people uh, that are going to decide this. If we left it to the political class, we'd never even be debating whether we stay part of the European Union or not. And, 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 and come on, you know, the next election isn't a general election. And I listen to all the commentators, and all they talk about is what will UKIP do, what's the impact of the UKIP vote on the Tories or Labour. We've got, in 82 days, a national election. It's a European election, and that's what I'm campaigning but on. But for a parliament where you say you don't really have any influence well, when you get Well, I don't there. think the British have any influence in Brussels, full stop. You know, whether, right. it's, whether it's the MEPs or the parliamentarians, or whether it's Mr Cameron begging uh, for concessions which clearly aren't going to come. At the time of your party conference, there's a new uh, thing that people have to sign if they want to be a UKIP candidate. And one of the things it asks is, do you have any skeletons in your cabinet, in your closet rather. Yes. Um, what does that mean? Well, I what think skeletons I, are you talking well, about? Well, what we have done with people is we have uh, done uh, police checks, CRB checks, uh, we've put them through some pretty tough interviews. I mean, there's no question that over the years one or two people have let UKIP down pretty badly. We're doing our best to make sure this doesn't ever happen again. So in specific terms, what are you trying to screen out? Uh, we're trying to screen out people who uh, would be a huge distraction. And that doesn't mean uh, I want to turn it into new Labour and they must all think the same thing. I want it to be a party that has debate, but I don't want it to be full of people who distract us from our main messages. And our main messages are big, important messages about who governs the country and can we control our borders. Idiosyncratic, but not eccentric. Um, I, OK, all right, all fine, right. I'll go with that. Um, what about, now, let's turn back to the, the general election. You've said that you will resign as party leader if you don't get one seat. Given your public standing in the polls, that's a very, very unambitious promise, isn't it, really? Well, look, you know, I'm, fighting, seats. I'm fighting a European election in 82 days' time, and I genuinely think that we have got a chance, a possibility, of topping the polls in those elections. These are the most important European elections that have ever been fought in this country, and actually, the leaderships of the, of, of the so-called major parties will be seriously affected by that result. So I'm not going to speculate about what happens in 2015. Clearly, if UKIP is to do as well as I hope it can in 2015, what it has first to do is to get yes. momentum through these European elections. Um, what about immigration? You've had a, we've yeah. had a week in which immigration figures well, went ba bouncing back up again. Is that, in a way, an even bigger issue for you than the EU? Well, I think that uh, the British public now understand that we cannot have our own immigration policy, that it's utterly meaningless to set targets of tens of thousands a year, whatever you choose. We can't have any control over who comes to Britain all the while we're members of the European Union. And it's as simple as that. And I think the real concern is that if you look at the Mediterranean, you look at the Eurozone, you see how badly they're doing, there's nothing we can do to stop many hundreds of thousands of more people coming to Britain if they need to. Why is this a problem? in the sense that we're seeing, you know, skilled people coming from Poland and France, all around me I hear French voices, German voices. These are people with huge amounts of skill and energy helping our economy to grow. If they weren't here, we wouldn't well, be growing so well. Uh, I mean, the truth, the truth about open door immigration is that not only do we not choose the number uh, that come, we also don't choose the quality. And whilst you're quite right, there are many, many people that have come from Eastern Europe who are working damned hard, and if I, you know, was Romanian, I'd be here in Britain. Of course I would, because yeah. the minimum wage is nine times as high. Uh, but we also let in people who are not benefiting our economy. And frankly, to have a massive oversupply of people earning minimum wage, qualifying almost immediately for in-work benefits, changing our communities, in many cases, where people are saying, goodness me, is this the town that I know? Is this where I grew up? And I think really, the question here, it isn't just about money. It isn't about whether the GDP is, is expanding. It's about nostalgia. 
no, I think it's about community. I think it's about a sense of who we are as a people uh, you know, and what we belong to. I toured uh, the whole of England last year in the run-up to, to the English county elections, and I met people everywhere who said, Nigel, we've never had a problem with immigration. It you know, jollifies the place and the food's mm. better and that's great, but, but how many people can we actually take? What chance have our kids got of getting jobs? Why am I, you know, whether I'm driving a lorry, uh, whether I'm working in a factory, why am I finding that my take-home pay is less than it was five years ago? And that is because... Well, that we, may be because of economic failure, it which is, is being helped by, by... We have a distorted labour market. We have a mass oversupply mm. of unskilled, semi-skilled, <laughs> and in some cases, skilled labour. It's driven down wages, and it's hurt those at the bottom of society most. So if, um, in, in UKIP's world, would there be a complete ban on people coming in from the rest of the EU? Not a complete <coughs> ban on people coming, of course not. We'd operate a work permit system, and a work permit Because you've talked about Australia, haven't you? I, yes, and I'm not a, let and me make net, this clear. I say, in net terms, they have yeah. got higher immigration than we've got, and proportionally they've got higher immigration than we've got, under the Australian system, yes, which you want for us. but they're quite a big country there's quite a lot of room if you travel around London you travel yeah, around this country on the motorways of the underground system without offending Australians uh, you know. watching most of it is sand <laughs> yeah, well a lot of it's sand but you can build things on sand I mean we've, that's happened in Dubai and elsewhere right. what the Australians have is quality control what I would like to see us get to is a situation where we've sorted out who is here legally who is here illegally and that's a big problem that isn't even being discussed at the moment and on an ongoing basis to have an immigration policy based on quality control surely that makes sense your critics say to you that you are in danger of becoming one of those parties which says one thing to one audience and another thing to another audience. You have said you're the only party brave enough to cut NHS spending, yet in the Withenshaw by-election you say you're going to protect the NHS. Uh, nationally you say you're going to um, look hard at the benefits bills, and Withenshaw you said we're going to kind of protect your benefits that, bills. I think, been saying one thing yeah. Yeah. I think we, what we have got to avoid is doing what the Lib Dems did. I was going to say, I, not yeah, wearing no, no, sandals, no, 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 but, you know. <laughs> but, but, but the Lib Dems tended to do this. The Lib Dems tended to chop and change their messages. And what we were really saying in the Withamshaw by-election is we don't want to go on giving £55 million a day to the EU. We don't want to go on giving £25 million a day in foreign aid. And we, yes, we need to be careful so about that. there's been a certain amount of, you'd accept, there's been a certain amount of uh, um, mixed message Lightly and gently. Um, I don't think it's quite as strong as that, but I think what happens is people run election campaigns uh, and they tend in the short term perhaps to change the message slightly and we have got to make sure mm. we're absolutely consistent. So just to take one of those issues, would you carry on funding the NHS at the current level? Uh, we would obviously want the NHS to deliver the best possible outcome for patients. I was in the Torbay That's Hospital. A very I was in the Torbay Hospital two so. mornings ago and it was brilliant. So there are some great bits of the NHS, there are some other bits of the NHS that are failing. Labour doubled spending on the National Health Service but didn't double the return. What we would look for is better value for money. Would you carry on spending the same amount of money on the NHS? As if we could get the same result or a better result by spending less, that's what we should try and do. Right, so the answer is no, you wouldn't. Well, uh, the, answer is, the answer is, let's see where we can make savings, given uh, that middle management has grown by f over 40% since 1997. It seems to me there are places here where we can make genuine savings. Are there any circumstances in which you would raise taxes to spend more on either welfare or health well, or anything I, else? I just think the lessons of tax are that when you raise taxes, uh, tax income goes down. And I would like to think of us uh, doing things the other way round. I think the most important tax reform we need is we need to say anybody earning minimum wage is not paying tax to incentivise people to get off benefits. So you cut taxes. Overall, that's what you'd hope to do. If you cut taxes, you've also got to cut back government spending exactly. substantially. And the mm. big challenge for UKIP after the European elections is to put a manifesto together uh, that doesn't, as the last one did, resemble war and peace, <laughs> um, and, and has some numbers that add up, and we're working on that. So we will see a properly cost... You certainly will. Election. That's coming, but it's not coming until after the European elections, because for the next 82 days, we want to campaign on right. who governs the country and, and why can't we get back okay, control one, of our borders. One big strategic question, what the Conservatives say again and again, is vote UKIP, get Labour. Yeah. It now seems as if Ed Miliband is going to change his policy at least a bit on a referendum. Doesn't that scupper your defence against that? I mean, no, I mean, Miliband will promise a referendum. Of course he will. It's become a tradition in British politics that at every election, everybody promises a referendum and then never, ever delivers it. Uh, what Liam Fox and others are saying today is baloney. Only a third of our vote comes from the Conservatives, and when you poll UKIP voters and say, if there was no UKIP candidate, how would you vote? Less than one in five of them would even consider voting for the Conservatives. The reason the Tories won't win a majority at the next election is not because of UKIP, it's because their own voters don't see Cameron as a Conservative. Nigel Farage for now, thank you very thank much you. indeed. Well, Grant Chaps is still with me, and we've been joined again by Nigel Farage.
OK, next election, UKIP win two or three seats and things are very, very evenly balanced. Any chance of the two of you working together in government at all? Well, I've been very clear. We, we want to have a majority government because UKIP can't actually deliver any of the change that Nigel will no doubt talk about. Uh, the only change he's likely to deliver is Ed Miliband being closer to Downing Street. Are you brothers under the skin, you know, however? Could you, could you, you actually know, work together? You know, UKIP is not a splinter off the Conservative Party. The vast majority of our voters, our members, our candidates have never been members of the Conservative Party, and most of them have never even voted Conservative. So it's, it, you know, we're starting this debate from the wrong position. The question you're really asking is, if after the next election UKIP has a number of MPs yes, in Westminster, would we do a deal with the party that would give us a referendum, you know, and give us a referendum quickly on our continued membership of the European Union. And, and the I mean, answer is yes. Well, the answer is of course. But, my big but point, I don't think it'll just my, be the Tories. Labour will match this But my big too. point to, to you, Nigel, is look, you can't actually, and you've said it yourself, you can't actually deliver the welfare reform, the immigration reform, or indeed the referendum in Europe. The only thing you can do is make it slightly easier for Labour and Ed Miliband to well, walk into Downing Street and do exactly the opposite well, if you don't to those things if that, you don't that you're saying arithmetic. people should be able to come. You know, I mean, look, the numbers suggest that is simply not true. Uh, the numbers suggest. You said it yourself. The numbers you? suggest. The numbers suggest that even if in marginal seats there was not a UKIP candidate, you're still going to lose those Didn't seats, you, and that's because uh, Grant, you know most sorry, of your forty percent of your votes have gone since the last election. Can I just jump in to call the Andrew Marshall just very briefly <laughs> um, to ask whether I mean Nigel said that he would work with you under these circumstances. Could you work with him under those circumstances? Well, uh, I can't be clearer than this. We're absolutely going all out for a majority okay. Conservative government to help those hard-working families. Wow. And all right. UKIP can't ha deliver those things. Hard-working no. families. Well, that's immigration controls, you can't deliver those, okay. can you? So